Hello, I'm Philippe. I'm working at uh, Igalia on WebKit and Vistreamer. So today I'm going to talk about Web Codex. So what's that? It's a new spec at the W3C um, that's allowing to give you low-level access to decoders and encoders from JavaScript. It's a bit crazy, but uh, yeah, that's what it is. So you <laughs> basically get uh, access to decoded and like raw frames and raw audio samples, and you can modify them if you want before encoding or after decoding. And mixing is separate. It has to be handled before or afterwards using a JavaScript library. Um, so what are the use cases? That could be one uh, use case for video editors. You need more things for video editors, of, of course, but that could be one part of it. You can also implement WebRTC funny ads, like modifying the video frame, adding ads on your top of your head, and so on. <laughs> Integration with um, Web Audio, Web GL, Web Transport. So you basically build like a pipeline in at the different layer in JavaScript. And you can use web workers to like move, offload the working on, on a separate thread. So at first I started with decode bin at source have sync. It's the obvious thing to try. Uh, it was working, but was not unfortunately uh, spec compliant. Um, because we need direct access to the decoder or encoder. So I thought that perhaps we could use GCRNS. Um, that's kind of more meant for testing. Um, so instead, I, I used the same kind of design and built a thing in C++ in WebKit. <laughs> With a simple API, you basically push a buffer, push events, and then you can process the output buffers of the decoder or the encoder. And uh, internally, there's a queue uh, of output buffers and events. And you have a simple case there with a source pad at the beginning, and then processing is received at the sync pad uh, at the other hand. Um, you can also do chaining. That's not really needed for WebCodex. It was needed for another thing, but you can like uh, chain harnesses together. It's a bit strange. Um, it's like reinventing pipelines in the end, but. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, there's no need for web codex, but uh, yeah. so the implementation st st status. Um, the main codecs are supported uh, that are mandated by the spec. So the like usual suspects like H.264, H.265, A1, and so on. And that's actually shipping in WP and WebKit GTK 242 that was released uh, last week as experimental feature. And then the audio stuff landed uh, just before release. I didn't have, um, uh, it was too late for the release, so it will, be, it will ship in 2.44. And we have t actually pretty good uh, test coverage support. The only missing thing is like a layer encoding, like a um, temporal layer and things like that, that is not supported yet. And yeah, there's another thing that would require perhaps uh, revisiting with integration with Web Audio and WebGL, which is not really working really well right now in yeah, embedded platforms. Because for instance, for Web Audio, the decoder outputs one format. Web Audio expects float 32. And then at the sound card level, you need like a sign 16 bits. So you have lots of conversions. And it's, it's not really optimal right now. And it uh, needs to be uh, revisited. So yeah, it's working in if you install the web GNOME Web Canary Flatpak, you should be able to use it. I, I have a demo that like, basically implements a simple media player with that. And um, yeah, ask me, I can show it to you on my laptop if you want. That's it, thanks. <laughs>